Hello everyone, my name is Meika and as you all know, I'm here to revise some common stuff in the progress test, especially September. So I'll talk about the musculoskeletal skin and connective tissue. Starting with the musculoskeletal system, here are the topics that I'm going to talk about and I also mentioned the lectures that I took the information from. So if you want deeper or detailed information, you can easily check the lectures out. Regarding the muscle part, I plan it to go deep since uh, we're taking most with this block, especially the first two weeks. So, first with bone growth and development, what we should know from here, the cells of the bone tissue, like osteocyte, osteoblast, osteogenic, and osteoclast. Osteoblast B standing for building and osteoclast C standing for crashing. So the bone matrix it has organic and inorganic parts. Uh, the organic it has the collagen type 1 for example and the inorganic it's mineralized it has water and other minerals. So osteogenesis and, and stages. Um, first the bone formation begins in the second month of the de of development and the postnatal bone growth which is until the early adulthood and then bone remodeling which is lifelong if you want to know about the intermembranous and endochondral ossification then uh, you can check Dr. Asma's lecture um, here is a table that compares between osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis Osteoarthritis, it's mechanical, while rheumatoid, it's autoimmune. And I recommend that you read this table by yourself, since it's very detailed, yet very beneficial. Okay, and um, in osteoarthritis, it's degenerative, associated with cartilage loss, while rheumatoid, as I mentioned, it's autoimmune disease, associated with inflamed synovium. Both have morning stiffness. But it's uh, not, but with different duration. Like in the, in the morning stiffness of osteoarthritis, it's less than 30 minutes, while in the rheumatoid, it's more than 30 minutes. It can be up to hours. And in rheumatoid arthritis, it's symmetrical, while in the osteoarthritis, it's asymmetrical. So, one common fracture is the green stick fracture. It is incomplete and it's usually found in children. Then there is the vitamin D deficiency, which leads to rickets in children and osteomalacia in, in adults. Then the common test. So there is the anterior drawer sign that we took. Um, it's positive when there is an, an increase in the anterior gliding of the tibia due to the ACL injury. And then the, there is the McMurray test, which has two ways. External rotation, which lead to the medial tear. An internal rotation would, would uh, lead us to the lateral tear. So now with the sarcomere and its components. In the next slide, I've wrote the explanation of every zone, line, and band. So what we have to know is that the sarcomere has thin and thick filaments, actin and myosin proteins, and that during contraction, there would be shortening of the H and I bands between the Z lines. So his shrinkage. But the A band remains the same length. So A band is always the same length. And then the neuromuscular junction and action potential, muscle contraction. One thing I want to emphasize on is that the action potential happens before the muscle contraction. Starting with the depolarization, depolarization and hyperpolarization. Muscular dystrophies. What we have to know from this slide is that there are two types: Duchenne and Bicker. Duchenne is um, okay. So both of them are caused by X-linked disorder, disorder. But in Duchenne, the dystrophy is deleted, and then Bicker, uh, it's there but it's partially functional, as you can see here. And then there's the Gower sign, which is the classically seen in the Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now with some important movements, 
Okay, I've noticed that the muscles that are supplied by the nerves that we're taking in this block are very frequent in the progress test, such as in the biceps femoris and the membranous, that they're both responsible for the extension of thigh at hip joint and the flexion of the leg at knee joint. And now the second part of this presentation, the skin, uh, skin and connective tissue. Here are the topics and the lectures that I took the information from. So on the connective tissue, I haven't found many questions. But what I believe is important here is knowing the types and the cells. So the types such as the proper, specialized, specialized supporting, and the cells, macrophage, mast cell, fibroblast, fat cell, plasma cell. So as we all know, the skin has three layers, okay? The first one is epidermis, then the dermis, then the subcutaneous fat cell. The epidermis layer has several uh, layers too. So from the surface to the base, we'd have the corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, and basali. The corneum has keratin, the spinosum has desmosomes, which is a type of um, epithelial uh, cell junctions. And then there is the stem cell site at the end. So epithelial cell junctions, there are many. For example, the integrins uh, those are found in the basolateral. Also, there is the hemidesmosome, gap junctions, desmosomes, adherence junctions, tight junctions. So eczema is either exogenous or endogenous. Endogenous means atopic dermatitis. Exogenous contacts dermatitis. Then uh, there is the non immunological and there is immunological. Immunological means it's type 4 delayed hypersensitivity uh, leading to allergic contact dermatitis. And then we would have to use the patch test to know the cause. And there's then there is the urgent contact dermatitis, which is usually caused by bases, acids, and solvents. Uh, the patch test is usually confused with the practice. The practice is for type 1 hypersensitivity, angioedema, and urticaria. Psoriasis has several types. What we want to focus on today is gut heat, which is triggered by streptococcal throat infection. And then the pustular, which is characterized by Koppner's phenomenon and Osbitt's sign. Koppner's phenomenon is when there is lesions at the site of uh, trauma. And Osbitt's sign is the pinpoint bleeding site. And then skin cancer. So we have three types, basal cell carcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and melanoma. Melanoma is the hardest to treat and the easiest to spread. can be identified by the ABCDE rule. So here are my references. First aid for the assembly step one and the lectures. Thank you so much for listening. If you have any questions, please contact me through my email. Good luck with your progress test.